And we're kicking off with L.A. Knight, who wasn't on last week's SmackDown due to a health issue, resulting in plans changing on the show where he was supposed to align with John Cena. WWE has kept quiet about Knight's health since then, but it now looks like Knight could be aligning himself with Big Match John very soon. WWE sources who reached out to PW Insider confirmed that Knight is expected to return on tonight's SmackDown, but there's no word on what he'll do on the show. After Knight was pulled last week, Cena was paired with AJ Styles, but during the show, Styles was laid out by the bloodline, leaving John without a partner again. At this time, Cena is scheduled to face Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa at Fastlane in a handicap match, but with Knight's return imminent, expect that to change to a tag team match soon enough. From the moment CM Punk was fired from AEW, rumors sparked about a potential return to WWE close to a decade after Punk infamously walked out of the promotion. If Punk wishes to wrestle again, WWE may be the only ones able to pay his high asking price, and while some names in WWE are said to have heat with Punk, Shawn Michaels isn't among them. During a media call to promote this weekend's NXT No Mercy show, Michaels was asked about bringing Punk back into the fold and said that of course he'd welcome him in NXT. Michaels added that he's not sure if Punk would go to NXT or would rather go straight to the main roster, and went on to say that he's always liked Punk, adding that he's a different kind of cat. Perhaps that's why Michaels, who had his own share of heat in his youth, likes Punk, and the NXT head made it clear that Punk returning to WWE isn't his call to make. Michaels would like to have Punk in NXT, but said, I don't think they'll let me, before acknowledging that his comments may get him in trouble with higher-ups. Punk has said he's free for two months, which some believe is a sign of a WWE return at November Survivor Series, and as far as HBK is concerned, he's got no issue with a CM Punk comeback. Unless a new deal with WWE has been reached in secret, Edge's WWE contract will expire tomorrow after he was recently moved from WWE's active roster to the miscellaneous roster. If a deal hasn't been reached, it'll mark the end of Edge's 25 years with WWE as he has remained under a variety of different contracts over the years, but he may not be off of TV for long. As pointed out on Wrestling Observer Radio, Edge's contract expiring tomorrow means he'll be a free agent on October 1st, the same day as AEW's Wrestle Dream event. Perhaps Edge will do something with Christian Cage if he joins, as the two have a storied history, and do you think we'll see Adam Copeland become All Elite this Sunday? Sound off in the comments. On this week's AEW Dynamite, Adam Cole appeared on crutches and with his leg wrapped up and spoke about the injury he suffered the previous week when coming out to support MJF. As we reported yesterday, some have questioned the nature of Cole's injury, with some believing that he was the masked man who attacked Jay White at the end of the show to try and frame MJF. In an update, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select dove deep into the nature of Cole's injury, stating, Due to the nature of pro wrestling, many question if Adam Cole's injury was legitimate. Deadlock Pro Wrestling announcing his match against Chris Dagger following the injury, they'd later say the match is off due to injury, and the masked men showing up at the end of Dynamite led some to suspect he wasn't injured. The word within AEW is that he is legitimately scheduled for surgery and will be out for quite some time. When seen, he was wrapped and had crutches and required help traveling. So if for some reason he wasn't hurt, everyone else isn't in on it. The report maintained that there was optimism among the AEW roster that he had just suffered an ankle sprain, but now that is no longer the situation. So if Cole is legitimately hurt and didn't attack Jay White, who did? Well, some have pointed their fingers at Ricky Starks, who took to Twitter to say it wasn't him, but he knows who it was. Stark's claim of knowing may be in jest, as he said fans will have to pay his Patreon to find out, and who do you think led the masked gang that attacked White on Dynamite? Despite being AEW's flagship show, this week's Dynamite had just four matches, and it turns out that two of them were at one point up in the air as to whether they'd happen. During Wrestling Observer Radio, it was said that Nick Jackson wasn't expected to wrestle heading into the show, and that there was a scramble to get him some ring gear for his triple threat. Jackson defeated Claudio Castagnoli and Brian Cage to earn a title shot at AEW International Champion Ray Phoenix, who also almost missed out on competing this week. Phoenix's first title defense against Jeff Jarrett only happened after Phoenix was cleared by AEW's medical team, as it was feared he'd sustained an injury during last week's win over Jon Moxley. 
This match, like Jackson's, went ahead on Dynamite, but the show experienced several issues with its feed during the show, an issue Tony Khan apologized for on Twitter. Khan said that there were issues at TBS with a new operating system, and hopefully these issues won't persist with upcoming episodes of AEW content. It's been just over a week since WWE's most recent wave of roster cuts, and one name who was let go was Mansoor, which came as a surprise to many. Some had suspected that WWE would keep Mansoor around for their Saudi Arabia shows, if nothing else, but one of Mansoor's biggest victories at a Saudi show earned him a ton of heat. During a recent Twitch stream with Mace, Mansoor recalled a huge roster meeting at Super Showdown in 2019, where everyone was eager to know who'd be winning a 51-man battle royal. When producer Jamie Noble said that the NXT kid's winning, everyone stared daggers at Mansoor and, later in the day, Mustafa Ali told him he had a ton of heat with the boys. Not only did the newcomer have heat for the match, but Ali told Mansoor that he hadn't said hi and shook people's hands, a tradition in the business that continues to this day. Kofi Kingston and Cesaro were said to be especially annoyed, which hurt Mansoor as a fan of both men, and the Saudi star did what he could to try and mend fences with many on the roster. Mansoor even told Luke Gallows mid-Battle Royal that he's a big fan of Gallows and Anderson's podcast, and the future model was able to shake hands and make amends after the match. As we've mentioned, Shawn Michaels spoke with the media ahead of this weekend's NXT No Mercy show, an event that Mustafa Ali was supposed to be a part of. Ali was set to take on North American champion Dominic Mysterio at the show, and on the call, Michaels noted that the card needed to be changed and Trick Williams has benefited. Michaels added that he heard about Mustafa Ali's WWE release just before Ali himself and said he was not involved in the decision at all. Ali's release, like Dana Brooke, was a call made by the main roster higher-ups as they were seemingly under main roster contracts who were spending a stint with the gold brand. Looking to the future, Michaels announced NXT's next event, Deadline, saying it'll take place on December 9th in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and said that WWE is eager to launch NXT Europe next year. Michaels also discussed Gable Stevenson's NXT status, saying he intends to use him, but because of external commitments, the two sides are working to find the right balance for the Olympian. Stevenson has been participating in some live events in Florida and recently headlined one such show, and WWE and NXT are currently in the process of organizing his schedule for the future. Speaking of relative newcomers, Michaels was also asked about Jade Cargill and said he recognizes the significance of signing her and described her as a diligent worker during training. Michaels is impressed by the ex-AEW star's presence, saying she will be well-suited for WWE, and while he said he hopes for her to come to NXT, HBK is sure she will have great success no matter what brand she ends up on. Cargill is a huge signing, one Sean said he will maximize the potential of if she joins NXT, but we'll just have to wait and see what's next for her as a WWE superstar. One name fans can see right now in NXT is Becky Lynch, whose return to the gold brand has seen the man win title gold and has seen NXT's ratings climb to the highest number in years. At No Mercy, Lynch will defend against Tiffany Stratton in an Extreme Rules match, and when speaking to the New York Post, Lynch spoke about her move from Raw to NXT. Currently, we are a little light on women with credibility on Raw, so anyway, I can give these women who are great credibility, give them a match, give them an outing, and showcase them in a championship match. I think that only benefits everybody. It benefits the audience because we have more women that we care about and more women that I can beat. I need people to come up, I need people on this level, but if nobody's getting any TV time, if nobody's getting any story time, then they can't rise up because nobody knows who the hell they are. It's hard to gain momentum if you don't get no TV time, and it's hard to get TV time if there's nothing to fight for. We know that Rhea Ripley only likes hanging out with the lads, the Judgment Day, and doesn't like getting hit, so that's why I came along with my championship trying to give people some opportunities. I'm very grateful for my time, but I want more time, damn it. That's why I'll do all these things. That's why I'll go down to NXT. That's why I'll be on all the shows. That's why I'll be on dark matches on SmackDown, as well as being a mother and traveling and writing a book and all the other things I'm doing. Lynch's NXT Women's Title win makes her WWE's sixth Grand Slam champion, but will her reign end this weekend at No Mercy? Time will tell. At AEW All In, the promotion was thrilled to reveal that 81,035 fans were in paid attendance for the show, breaking the record for the highest attended wrestling event in history. It later came out, though not soon enough for Will Ospreay in his 81,035 tattoo, that the actual paid attendance was 72,265, 
and that the original number was simply not accurate. Now another number has come about, as a fan shared an email from the local council around Wembley Stadium with a Freedom of Information request stating that it's actually 85,258. So what is the real paid attendance for AEW All In? Well, it turns out that this email was a fake, and a legitimate email from the Brent Council confirmed that the paid attendance was 72,265. It was Brent Council that reported this number in the first place, and while the 85,258 figure may be the number of tickets distributed, it isn't the number of fans admitted into the stadium. As for why AEW inflated their paid attendance number, it seems the company may not be so different from WWE after all, and we'll have to see if the same happens next year at All In 2024. We've got some unfortunate news to report now as Impact Wrestling's Trey Miguel and his fiance Ashley D'Ambois were recently involved in a hit and run accident. On Twitter, Miguel, one half of the reigning Impact World Tag Team Champions, revealed that he and D'Ambois were hit by a Ford F-150 which sent them flying into a pole on the Florida Turnpike. The other driver sped off without checking on them and Miguel was clearly annoyed at the such good people we live amongst, saying that no witnesses have come forward. Given that there were 10 other cars at the scene, there were clearly people around, but they've not come forward to make a statement, clearly angering the Impact star. At this time, there's no word on what injuries the pair suffered, and while Miguel was on last night's episode of Impact, that show was taped last week, prior to the hit and run. Hopefully we'll get an update on him and D'Ambois, who has competed in AEW and the NWA, and for now, we are wishing them the best after this ordeal. For two years now, Brian Danielson has been an AEW wrestler and has had some roles behind the scenes as well, and recently the American Dragon was touted as a leader of AEW Collision. On his Grilling JR podcast, Jim Ross said that Brian is a leader and that Collision is Danielson's show now that CM Punk is not a factor, and we'll have to see what's next for Danielson as he continues to work with AEW. Earlier this week, it was revealed that ex-WWE superstar Manu was dealing with some serious health issues, and there's been some good news on his condition. In a statement, his mother told PW Insider that he is recovering and has been discharged from the hospital, and we're continuing to send our best to this member of the famed NOIE family. The last time Logan Paul competed in a WWE ring, he was besting Ricochet at SummerSlam, and since then, there's been no word on what's next in the career of the Maverick. We do know that Paul will make his boxing return next month against Dylan Dennis, but when speaking to the New York Post, Paul made it clear that he will continue his wrestling career. Despite his limited schedule, Paul said he's a full-time wrestler, complete with contract and spot on the roster, and made it clear he wants to hold WWE championships. Paul said WWE has been very accommodating of his schedule, giving him time to box and wrestle, and outlined plans to take over the wrestling world as part of WWE. While some didn't agree with Paul joining WWE, his skills in the ring and on the mic can't be denied, and it may be a matter of time before we see Logan Paul's name in the record books of WWE's champions. It was during a match on the May 12th SmackDown that Dakota Kai suffered a torn ACL, and while she's been on TV alongside Damage Control, she hasn't been able to compete or get physical. Kai's injury is said to have occurred when she was trying to protect Liv Morgan, who also suffered a shoulder injury during this match, which pit Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez against Kai and Io Sky. On her Twitch stream, Kai gave an update on her injury, saying it typically takes 8-9 to nine months to come back from, putting her return date around January or maybe February. This means that Kai could be a surprise entrant into the 2024 Women's Royal Rumble match, but that'll only happen if she's 100% and cleared, and for now, we can only wish her a speedy recovery. Speaking of injuries, Ariana Grace tore her ACL in October of 2022, and after a lengthy recovery process, the second generation superstar will have her first TV match in close to a year very soon. WWE announced that Grace will face Fallon Henley as part of NXT Level Up, and while she spent a lot of time injured, Grace has been active out of the ring. Grace, the daughter of Santino Morella, recently competed in the Miss Universe Canada pageant, where she was no doubt supported by her boyfriend Channing Stax Lorenzo, but she's ready to re-establish herself on NXT TV. In just a few days, Sammy Callahan's latest tenure with Impact Wrestling will come to an end, and the former Impact World Champion isn't wasting any time looking for other prospects. Callahan tweeted that his DMs are open for bookings, seminars, signings, and appearances, and there's no shortage of places that would benefit from the veteran. 
Callahan recently teased reuniting with his old friend John Moxley, but that remains to be seen. And where would you like to see Callahan go next? More from AEW as Julia Hart defeated Willow Nightingale on this week's Dynamite, and fans may have noticed that Hart is winning a lot when she gets in the ring. In fact, this win is Hart's 27th straight victory, and she's hoping to get her 28th and the TBS title this weekend at Wrestle Dream. During this week's NXT, Thea Hale debuted a new look influenced by JC Jane, as well as a new theme song, but this theme is one that fans may find familiar. The track Raised in Hell is the same entrance theme used by Impact Wrestling's Jody Threat, but with no legal dispute between the two sides, expect both to use this catchy tune going forward. And we're ending with Cody Rhodes, one of WWE's biggest superstars right now. But this week, the American Nightmare showed up in the trailer for the upcoming Captain Laserhawk Blood Dragon trailer from Netflix. Unfortunately for the American Nightmare, his time in the trailer does not go well, as after preparing to strike the warden of a supermax prison he's in, a bomb in Cody's head promptly explodes. It seems even in the world of this anime-inspired Netflix show, Cody can't finish the story. But on Twitter, Rhodes was simply thrilled to have a role, however brief, in the upcoming show. Speaking of superstars delving into acting, John Cena first played Peacemaker in 2021's The Suicide Squad and would return to the role for the 2022 TV series, and now the character will continue. On Threads, DC Studios head James Gunn confirmed that Cena and Peacemaker will remain as part of the revamped DCU, so expect more of John and his shiny chrome helmet on the big screen.